Hey everybody, this is Grant, your friendly neighborhood OpenShift team member. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the all-new OKD version 3.10. OKD is the origin community distribution of Kubernetes, and it is the upstream source code for Red Hat OpenShift container platform. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, in this uh, demonstration, I'm going to install everything on a single host. That's how I run OpenShift for my local development environment. Um, so I thought that a lot of people may want to just try out OKD and run it in a single host fashion, but not using something like ManyShift or OC Cluster Up, which is by far much easier to do. But this install will give you the feel of a true OKD cluster, just like if you had multiple masters, multiple uh, nodes as well. So I am using Fedora 28 in this video, uh, and I am just, I fell in love, fallen in love with Fedora 28. It is my main operating system distribution now, so I recommend you give that a try as well. So we're going to be using VirtualBox today, so let me go ahead and get that started up here. And let me minimize my Firefox here. So what we're going to do is create a new virtual machine. So I'm just going to click on new. We're going to call this TechDope. That's the uh, domain name that we're going to be using today. And this is Linux and it's a Red Hat 64-bit distribution. And as you can see, I have 64 gigs of RAM in my main battle station here. So we're just going to give this 32. Um, we're going to create a virtual disk. Um, and we're going to click on create here uh, file location let's give this maybe 160 well, let's just go 200 200 gigs here or roughly here uh, let's see we want the vdi type dynamically allocated let's save this in our special vm folder here which is a um, SSD that I have mounted so I want to make sure it goes onto that SSD I'm going to click on create that's going to create the virtual machine uh, preferences and properties for me let's go in and just set a few other settings here mainly networking I want it to be bridged so it gets its own IP address <coughs> and under storage I want to mount a live CD for the install and I'm going to install CentOS uh, 7 minimal install. Click OK. Now we're going to boot this bad boy up and see what happens. And I click my mouse in there. Let's stretch the screen out a little bit so you can see it. Let's see. How do we make this um, scale? Is it scaled mode maybe? No. There we go make this bigger so you can see it. I'll close this warning right here. So now CentOS, um, the install is booting up and we're just going to walk through the CentOS 7 install real quick here. Should just take a minute. Yes, we're English, so I'll click continue. <coughs> um, so now it's just validating that we have the install source and we're going to set up our installation destination so you can see that virtual drive that I've created. We're going to use that. I'm going to configure partitioning myself. Click on done. I'm going to create just a standard partition and I'm going to add a swap partition. So I'll select swap and I'm just going to give it 8 gig. Uh, hopefully I don't ever hit the swap. And then we're going to give it a root partition here. And we're going to use the rest of the available space. 187 gigs, add that mount point, click on done, click on accept changes, and we should be almost ready. Last thing we want to do is enable networking. So we'll click that, it's going to connect uh, to the bridge network, and we can see it has an IP address of .14. Um, so I'm going to click on done there, click on begin installation. Now this is going to go ahead and <coughs> install CentOS for me. It takes just a minute here. And remember the IP address was .14. Okay. So while this is finishing up the install, let's actually go back to Firefox and go to my router. 
my router is 192.168.0.1 and I'm going to log in here. Now this is an ASUS router and I'm running a custom Merlin firmware. It's not relevant uh, to this video, but on most routers you have the option of port forwarding. So I'm going to select virtual server port forwarding and let me delete the previous ones I had here for TechDope and we're going to call this service name TechDope and the port range is going to be 8443 local IP address is 192.168.0.14 local port 8443 so what I'm doing here is I'm setting it up so on my external IP address if it gets a request on port 8443 it'll actually forward that to an internal host behind my NAT networking so that it can resolve um, these IP addresses. So let me add another one here and this one's going to be port 443 and the last one we need to do is port 80. So you need to forward 8443, 443 and 80. Add that one. Now we're going to click apply and my router is going to apply those changes. Let's um, scoot back over to the install. It's almost done. It's performing the post installation setup tasks at this point. So we'll let that uh, finish. Now after we get this installed, I'm also um, going to show you how I set up my DNS server um, to resolve techdope.io to my OpenShift uh, instance. And let's go ahead and set a root password. I think that's what it's waiting on me. I think the install is actually finished. And let me create a quick user account here. Make it administrator so I can sudo. Click on done there. And still performing those post installation setup tasks. So let me go ahead and show you a few other things on uh, the DNS stuff while that's finishing. So I'm going to go to if uh, config uh, if uh, what's my IP address? There is a site I always use but uh, I'm forgetting it right now off the top of my head. It's, uh, it's a good one too. I think it's ifco or something like that. But anyway my public IP address is this. So now if I go over to my Gandhi account um, that's what I set my records up to use, my A record, C name, um, things like that. Okay, so let me log into Gandhi here. And I am going to pause the video just for a second so I can actually look up my username and password. So I'll be right back. So my username is G Shipley. Put my password in. Don't save it. And Gandhi is just the domain name register that I use. Um, so let's look at our domains here. <coughs> and you can see I have techdope.io, so I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to select the DNS records. And you can see a couple of things here. Remember, this is my IP address, 65190154.23. And so what I've done is I've set up my A record, my at, for 65190154.23 so it's going to point to that IP address that I get from my ISP. The other thing I set up is a console A record and an apps.console A record. Now what's most important here is this wildcard, this star, which is a C name that points to apps.console and we need that because when we deploy applications on OpenShift it deploys, it creates a new URL on the fly based on the app name and namespace. And so having that wildcard DNS entry there will allow all of the pods that I deploy and expose a service for to be accessible on the internet as well. So CentOS uh, was installed, so we're going to reboot it here and then we're going to SSH in and start the install process. All right, we're going to boot back up to CentOS here. <coughs> and now CentOS is booted up. So let's go ahead and open up a new terminal window here. I'll make the font a little bigger for you so you can see. And I'm just going to SSH root. 
at 192.168.0.14 and I'm going to authenticate here. Now the first thing I always do on a new system is yum uh, update and this is going to download any updated patches or packages that have been released since I downloaded that minimal install CD or actually when that was created. So we're getting 177 megs of updates and so this is going to fix any uh, security uh, vulnerabilities that were discovered after that latest snapshot or that latest minimal uh, CD was created or image was created. So make sure that I have an up-to-date system before I begin the install process. And so I do have uh, gigabit internet so this the download went fast um, as you can see and now it's going through and updating all of the packages. And it looks like I'm getting a new kernel here as well, 3.10. All right, we're over halfway done now. It's cleaning up. And then after this finishes, I also like to install Git right off the bat as well, um, just because I'm going to actually clone uh, a repository that I'm going to use to install OpenShift on. All right, that's been finished. So let's go ahead and yum install Git. This is going to install the Git revision control system. All right. So now let's go back to Firefox and let's go ahead and go to my GitHub repo, github.com slash gshipley. And I install OpenShift so often that I've actually created my own automation on top of the Ansible um, playbook. And so I do have instructions here on how to, to do this, but I'm just going to get clone my repo here. And this is basically going to create a new directory called install CentOS. And inside of this, I have a shell script called install OpenShift. Now, this has um, been, been the work of many. I think 15 different people have contributed to this. So thank you to everybody who has submitted pull requests for this. It is an interactive installer, um, but under the covers it is just making sure that all of the required RPM packages are installed. Um, it's automating the creation of the inventory file. It lets you set variables whether you want to install metrics and things like that. But under the covers what's really happening is it's just running the uh, Ansible playbook that ships as part of, of OpenShift. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll clear my screen. We'll do install OpenShift. And it's going to ask me for the domain I want to use. Now I want to use a custom domain, techdo.io, but if you don't have a custom domain, just use the nip.io that's defaulted there. You can also create your first OpenShift user here. So I'm going to create one called gshipley with a password of password. OpenShift version, I'm going to use the OKD version 3.10 and it has my IP address, I'm going to set the port, and now it's going to go off and install OpenShift in an automated fashion, or sorry, OKD in an automated fashion. And at the end of this, I should have an OKD installation running 3.10, which is the latest version with logging and metrics, and a username created as well. Now this process takes about 20 minutes, so we'll see. It's uh, about 4.15 right now, so in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and then I will pick it back up once the install finishes. All right, I think we're just about done with the install. It's 4.33, um, so it's been about 18 minutes so far, so we should be finishing up here anytime. Now, if you... Um, a word of warning here. I am the only one that's ever ran across this, uh, which is why I started recording here. For some reason, I don't know if it's the way I'm setting up the VM or what, but sometimes this task, verifying that the uh, master node is up um, or that the controller plane is up, just times out for me um, the first time. If you run into that, let me know 
if you did it exactly like I did. And the way to fix it, though, is if you do see that problem and the install errors out, is just to run the installer again and it fixes itself up. And I'm not sure if it's a bug in my install script or something wonky I'm doing. Could be my SSD. I have no idea. It could be something on my network. But like I said, um, a lot of people use my script that I have here, and I'm the only one that's ever seen that problem. Um, so let me know if you see it as well. Um, but we should be finishing up here just any second. And as part of this install, <clears throat> I also create 200 persistent volumes, um, which was a request on GitHub that we have some persistent volumes right out of the gate. So you will see that um, that's being created as well at the very end. All right, so the install is actually finished and it's creating the persistent volumes now. Um, what I was thinking about during the install, you know, this has taken a little bit longer than normally. I said 20 minutes and we've been going on, you know, 27 minutes. And I was thinking about that. The only um, difference this time that may be impacting performance that you may want to think about is I was thinking about how I created this virtual machine. And if we look at my settings, the thing I forgot to do that I normally always do is assign it uh, more processors. So in this case, I just left it the default. So even though my uh, processor has eight threads and four cores, I only gave it one of those. So it was actually just operating on a, on a single thread. And so that may have impacted performance on the install just a bit. Um, just something to think about. I'll probably change this um, if I actually end up using this system and assign it more cores for my actual OpenShift install. But everything is up and running now, and we can see that it gave me my login command here. And so let's go ahead and log in to the uh, API, the OKD API on the command line. So I am definitely logged in now. Um, so I can do OC new project demo project, and that will actually create a new project for me. Now, what this illustrates is that it is actually using that custom domain name that I applied. So if we open up HTTPS console.techdope.io colon eight four four three, we should be able to log in. Now, by default, it generates a self-signed certificate. If you want to use your own security certificate, let me know in the comments and I'll create a video showing you how to install OpenShift with a uh, real SSL server. But we can see here that we're looking at the brand new OKD 3.10 install. So let me go ahead and log in here. And bam, there we go. Here's the service catalog. And this is the brand new OKD. So let's go ahead and deploy something just to make sure that everything is up and running. Let's just do a PHP app here for simplicity's sake. I'm in the service catalog now. Let's add this to the um, what do I call it? Demo project. We have a couple of versions of PHP available. PHP test. Let's do GitHub. Actually, let me get a PHP repo here. GitHub.com slash gshiply without a T on the end. Let me go to my repositories here. Simple PHP. Clone this. Go over here. Paste that in. And this is going to use the source to image project to create a container for me on the fly. So we can see that this build is running. It's cloning the repo down here. And we can also see that we have an error getting metrics. So why is that? That's because the metric system uses a custom or a, uh, I don't want to call it a bogus, but a self-signed self SSL cert. So I actually have to notify my browser to accept that certificate. So if I click on that link once and add the exception, I will no longer see that. Now, metrics is still coming up because this install just finished. Um, so when that finishes coming up, we will be able to see metrics now. And we can see that it is building my container still. We can click on view full log here and it's pushing the layers. The push is successful. We can see that the pod is getting deployed now. Should be turning blue. There we go. It's all up and running. And here is that URL off of my techdope.io. We click that. 
and we can see sure enough that everything is, is up and running as expected. So that is how quick and easy you can install a full OKD environment on a bare metal machine or a virtual machine using the scripts that I wrote if you want to take advantage of that or you can use the Ansible installer which again I'm just using under the covers. Now another quick thing that you may be interested in is the reason I clone this repo, right? If I go into the ins install CentOS, I go into OpenShift Ansible, there's some examples in here um, with the additional, um, let me find it here, CD roles, OpenShift examples. And I think it's in files again, and examples, and 3.10, oops, well, if I could do it here, 3.10, <laughs> there we go, all right, and then into image streams, we can see we have some image streams here, let me print that working directory for you out, it's a mouthful, but it's in OpenShift Ansible's roles, OpenShift example, files, examples, 310 image streams. And if you wanted to add some additional image streams or templates, you can do that here. So you can do OC create dash F image streams sent us. And you can see that it created .NET, HTTPD, Jenkins, Mongo, MySQL, Node.js, and Wildfly. Um, we could go into uh, XPaz streams if you wanted to create some of those. Let's say maybe we want um, Tomcat or whatever the case may be. You can install those as well with the OC create command. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get OKD up and running on your own local machine, whether that's bare metal or whether that's a virtual machine. Thanks a lot for watching.